Yes, um, if you want to, you can unwire yourselves from the microphones. We do have the um, Farmer Act on our program, um, which is Chris. If you, you can ask Chris to come, come forward. Um, there is actually a third petition as well. If you are um, having a squeeze around the e petition platform on the say Parliament's website, so um, the FPCA has a petition that closes today, so please do it. Um, so, um, I'm not sure whether it's exactly 11.59 p.m. Uh, what the time is, but it closes today, just this is the date and see if you look for excessive um, fly path noise, um, we got about um, 4,200 signatures last time I checked. Um, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end, nearly the end of our program today. Um, yes. And also for Victoria Barron Park, there is an open feedback channel there in the link. You can find it on my Facebook page if you want. Um, uh, it closes on the 15th of September. 14th. 14th of September. Yeah, and we have got the Victoria Park Barabin um, Residence Action Group page. So we were working with Neil a bit. We're trying to get some of the updates on that once we analyse the information. What I might do is for all the yeah. um, four issues and mm -hmm. then some, we've also heard today about Tuna Harbour and the Redlands 2030. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's quite a number of um, obviously things happening in, in Brisbane. Um, I do have everyone's email who's registered, so I might collect some of these things that are happening and send, send this around to, to everyone so that we can also join each other's groups, networks, new status, just to keep up to date with um, what's happening. But um, before we close, I do want to invite um, Chris to say a few words on behalf of the South East Queensland Community Alliance. As I mentioned in the opening of uh, today, part of the purpose is uh, not just to demonstrate some of the relevance of academic research to practical matters on the ground, but also <coughs> how these different groups eventually uh, need to broker these kinds of connections with and between each other and obviously some of these linkages have already been, been formed and that led to the South East Queensland Community Alliance and Chris is the president. You're welcome to the stage. Thank you Marcus. Is that voice okay? Okay. Um, the SEQCA, South East Queensland Community Alliance, is a volunteer-based organisation. It's formed by people from other community organisations, Redlands, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane, Logan, and we share information. We focus on planning and governance and quite a bit of environment information, so we're sharing information. And we put in submissions to government. So when, for example, the Queensland government's looking at legislation, things go to committee, committee invites submissions, we put some submissions in. Last year we held our first conference and it was fantastically organized by Philippa, who's just about to put her hand up in the air. That's it. And um, she's gonna do it again this year. It's probably going to be a slightly smaller event done in conjunction with Queensland Royal Society, but it will be focusing on mainly planning type issues, community and planning, and that will be held on the 21st of October. That's the current date that we're planning to. That will be, the event will be somewhere over the river at Griffith. And Philip is just fine tuning the program of speakers. Uh, she taps any of you on the shoulder, that's why she's done. Um, so today we've had a good um, program of information about a number of topical issues and I thought about it briefly just now and I thought it's like an AA meeting. <laughs> it's <laughs> activism and apathy. You know, we're the people that want to be active and promote activism. And our common challenge is the community's apathy overall. And what we need to be working on are some mechanisms, some tools, some approaches to try to increase the number of people who are activists and get better at it. So there's a few things that um, I've jumped down that we need to think about. And a point was made earlier on today that by Elizabeth, I think, that we need to find out what people are interested in, what floats their boat, 
How do we connect with people? I spend quite a bit of time administering some Facebook pages like Threatless 2030 Facebook page, and you start to get a feeling for, you know, what posts work and what posts don't work, and what's interesting, what causes people to click. So we all need to get better at understanding those things. And um, I think I could tell you that if I did a post about planning and community involvement, we would get very little interest. If I do a post about the council's about to chop the tree down, it gets a lot of interest. So there's a bit of a clue there. People focus on threats, the things that they value, and things that they can relate to. And things that are conceptual are probably a little bit harder for most people. I mean, where the, where the 1% here, the 99% out there, don't necessarily connect. So you've got to find ways to tell stories to get those people to understand the point that you're trying to make. And a single story isn't actually enough. You know, getting a story in a newspaper is nice, but it's not enough. You've got to build up a narrative. And that's a succession of stories that get people to start to repeat your story to other people. I can give you a little example of what we've done in the Redlands. We have a terrible council in the Redlands that doesn't listen to the community, that does awful things. But one of their weaknesses is that they've managed to give us the situation where our rates and charges are the highest in South East Queensland. And I know that because I've done all the number crunching to work that out. So we've been putting that information out there for two or three years now and now quite a lot of people on Facebook just hire streets and charges in South East Queensland so we've built the narrative it's out there other people are now saying the same thing so that's a, a thought for how to sort of get your cause to be better understood by people is to build a story that becomes a narrative that other people start to pick up and carry for you. We do need to work closely together as groups because we can help each other a little bit. We just talked about petitions. You should all sign those three petitions and you should sign one more. That's for the Birkdale White Water Project, which is another Olympic foolish idea. Um, so it doesn't take that much time to share someone else's information. That's what we should be doing. Um, we need to talk about things that the government doesn't want to do. The government spends a lot of money hiring journalists. So most journalists now work for the government telling mistruths and half-truths. And they put a lot of thought into the way they want their story to be understood by the masses. And you need to look at that and think, well, what's missing? What are they not talking about? What is the gap? because the gap's probably where we want stuff to be out there. So you need to think about ways to get that extra bit of information and to get it out there. So right to information is a little tool. It's a very pain in the ass tool. It costs a bit of money, takes a lot of time, but it is a way of putting pressure on government by getting information out that they don't really want you to have. There's another little tool, if you've got an MP who's reasonable, and I know there's a few MPs that are reasonable, um, they can ask a question on notice. So in Parliament, they have questions without notice, which is theatre, and then there are questions with notice, which is a written question, answer comes out in 30 days, and they're actually quite useful because people in the departments write stuff to answer those questions, and you can actually get useful information. So talk to your MP. They're allowed to ask one question without notice each sitting day. Queen's Parliament doesn't sit that often, but that's how much they can do for you. We need to move beyond Facebook. Facebook's a tool. It's useful. It's nice to have a Facebook page and you know get a lot of followers and we use that tool. But lots of people don't do Facebook. So we need to think about other ways of communicating with the community and getting the community engaged. Britain's 2030, when we set up about nine years ago to deal with gender, and it's still undealt with, 
Um, one of our thoughts was the local newspaper is terrible, it's biased, it's not getting out the stuff we want. So we set up a website and we write our own stories and we disseminate them through a email newsletter, which you can get <coughs> ways of doing that by cheaply. So, you know, we put our stories out there about the council budget and its comparison with other councils, about Tunda and that kind of stuff. So we're competing in a way with the local media because we don't trust the local media to do the right thing. And Queensland's poorly serviced with just the Korea Mail. It's a terrible paper. <coughs> but things about, you know, if you do a website, the information has more permanence. Facebook, you know, you try and find, unless you've done enough Facebooking like I have, it's hard to find that post that was made three weeks ago. Whereas a website has a lot more permanence. Community meetings are an important tool, and um, that's another thing that Redlands 2030 has been doing for most of its nine years, except for a little bit during COVID. But uh, getting 30 to 60 people in a room every month, you know, we'll figure that that's probably more than most of the local political parties in the Redlands can manage. And it's people connecting, talking to each other, hearing from guest speakers. So. That's important, direct action, roadside waving placards, that's another good thing to do. Um, I'm sure in the Gabba you get a lot of people driving past Raymond Park, five people, ten people with a sign on a particular Saturday morning, you start to get your message out. We talked about getting angry, and I understand that we are angry quite often, so maybe that's three days, angry activists. <laughs> dealing with apathy, but mockery is powerful. I think it's the most powerful tool. When politicians are being laughed at, it hurts them. So it's okay to be a little bit cross. Try and find a way of making fun of these people, because that's probably what they don't want. And that's really what I try to do now, do things that they don't want. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Chris. That was a great summary and uh, a couple of nice words of wisdom. That's all we got um, for today. Um, I hope that the event did um, spark new connections and hopefully um, some more anger that will be translated into some constructive ways, ways forward for. Um, new linkages in partnerships. Uh, there's a couple more events coming up. Um, Jen also mentioned an event just happening tomorrow. If you haven't had enough of the Green Institute and the symposium today, then please join us again tomorrow for another More Than Human Symposium at QUT. Um, but thank you so much, especially on the Sunday, for making your way to the end of our program. And um, if you're happy, I will let you know future events that um, we are organising in this space. But in the meantime, do um, sign up to the various new status Facebook groups of these um, organisations we've heard um, from today in order to all support their movements and to um, um, stay up to date with what's happening in our space. Thank you so much, have a good rest of the day and we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thank you.